Hello and welcome to part two of this series FileMaker and Graph Databases. My name is Joris Arts from Clickworks. We are a FileMaker Platinum partner based in Antwerp, Belgium. Uh, download the example files from our website clickworks.eu. Follow us on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn and so on. So welcome back if you already followed the first uh, video what is a graph. So this is part two of a series of four. I'm going to show you how to import FileMaker data in a graph database. If you didn't watch the first video, uh, it's worth it uh, because we are going to refer to some concepts we explained in that one. Um, in the following video, I will show you how to update a graph from within FileMaker. And in a final fourth video, I will show you how to get rid of FileMaker backend structures like tables and fields and replace a FileMaker database with a graph backend and use FileMaker only as a frontend for a graph database. So now, let's show you how to import FileMaker data in a graph. What's the scenario I have? Um, a personal database here. It's a very simple uh, FileMaker solution. And I have 580 people in my database. So for instance, this guy is the IT service officer. And there's one simple relationship in this database. It's so-called reports to relationship. So a person can report to a manager. So this service officer reports to the IT manager. IT manager has two people uh, that he supervises and he also reports back to the general manager IT. And the general manager IT reports back to the president of the organization. And that will be me, of course. <laughs> and now note that all the names are uh, random names, uh, but the relationships are actually uh, derived from a real uh, personal database. Okay, so you see there is a hierarchy going on there. I have people reporting to managers. Okay, so this is the uh, foreign key reports to, and it refers to the primary key of each person. Okay, now suppose that I want to analyze this data, not only within from within FileMaker, but using a graph. What will that reveal to me about this database? Okay, so let's do that step by step. How to import data in a graph? Well, the first thing, you need to do is in fact export your uh, data and I'm going to use FileMaker's built-in merge format this is basically a comma separated uh, format but it also uh, gives me the field names in the first row and this will come in handy if I import it later in a graph database so I'm choosing merge as the export format and I'm going to export um, the primary key for my records, the foreign key, the reports to key, that refers to the managers, and then the names, job titles, and branches of each uh, employee. This is not that important. I'm using Unicode as the character set. Now, the next step is to create a new graph database. And in the first video, we learned how to do that. So I'm creating a new graph named personal. And then there was one thing that took some time for me to find out. If you want to import data in a graph, you need to place your export files in a specific import folder. And this is accessible from the management console. I will show you that live in a minute. So this is my personal graph database. And from here, I can go to the import folder. It's a particular folder on disk. It's a subfolder from your database. So it's a little bit like FileMaker Server uh, and the data folder of FileMaker Server. So FileMaker Server has only access to uh, files and folders in its data folder. It's, it's a little bit the same with Neo4j. So I'm putting my export file, my comma separated merge format file uh, in this import folder and then I can access it from within Neo4j. Okay, so now let me show you that in Neo4j. So I have my Neo4j desktop. I have my personal database already uh, uh, here. So I already uh, did the import. You see I have the same number of nodes as I had in FileMaker. Now if I open the management console, this is how you locate this particular uh, import folder. So if I click on it, I'm brought to the finder and there is my text file, okay? 
how does this text file look like? Well, the merge format gives me the field names in the first row. I need commas as a separator. So if you do that in Europe, you will get semicolons. So you will need to replace these semicolons with real uh, commas. And the data should be surrounded by double quotes. And so here you see the primary keys, foreign keys. Not everyone is reported to someone. So there is not always a foreign key. Then the person names, functions, and the branch names. OK, this is my export file. How do you load that in uh, your brand new Neo4j graph? Well, it's actually not that hard. There is a load CSV statement in Cypher. Uh, so I'm using that one, load CSV with headers from my uh, export file. And I'm going to put that one in a variable called line. Next, I'm creating new nodes of type person. And to create the nodes from each line of my CSV file, I simply say set P, my personal node, equals line. So every line in my CSV file will become a new person node, and the properties of the person will be defined based on the columns in my uh, CSV file. So it's not that difficult. The only special thing going on here is the conversion to integer. So I'm converting both ID and reports to both keys to integer. Okay, so we saw how to create the person nodes from the CSV file. The next step is to build the relationships because FileMaker provides us with the primary keys and foreign keys. That's the way how FileMaker uh, understands relationships but we need to create a native uh, graph relationships so what is happening here in the line number two I'm summoning two nodes of type person I call the one P and the other supervisor and then with this where clause I'm matching nodes where the reports to key matches the primary key of another node that I call supervisor and with these two nodes, P and Supervisor, I create a real native Neo4j relationship, a reports to a relationship. So this is step two. First, I've loaded the CSV file into new nodes, and now I'm matching uh, primary keys and foreign keys to build the relationships. And after executing this statement, I could remove the reports to key and even if I want the primary key the ID field because a graph database does not need primary keys and foreign keys to build relationships this is a native relationships in the, uh, relationship in Neo4j but for the sake of this example and for the following video um, to sync between FileMaker and a graph database I'm going to keep these keys because this is the only way that FileMaker can communicate about relationships. So I'm just keeping these keys for the sake of uh, providing sync functionality between FileMaker and the graph in a later step. Now, after importing and creating the relationships from FileMaker, this should be the result. Let us have a look at the example in Neo4j. So I already opened my personal database management console. I'm going to open the browser and have a look at my database. So there is only one type of node, uh, nodes, uh, nodes of type person. There's only one type of relationship right now, uh, reports to relationships. And not everybody is connected. So there are only 379 relationships for 580 nodes. So these 580 nodes correspond to my um, 580 records in FileMaker. So these are all my employees. Now I can click on this relationship and by default Neo4j will give me a small sample of 25 nodes but I can remove this limit and this will basically give me an overview of the entire graph. So let me click on the person node, display the names. And so as you can see, as you would expect, the president of the organization is the spider in the web. So he's in the middle of a nice hierarchical uh, structure. So this is all looking good and I can now 
zoom out a little bit and this seems perfectly normal everybody is reporting to me in one way or another but then you see that there are some clusters to the side so apparently there are a few missing links in the database and as you can see this visual representation allows me to get a very quick overview of what's going on in my database so now I can click on these particular clusters like this one Missy Wallace or this one Kerry Watt and I can start fixing these errors uh, in FileMaker okay but I want to show you that in the next video so how to update a graph from within FileMaker wouldn't it be nice if we could immediately go back to FileMaker and fix that but before I'm going to do that to show you the immediate advantage of using a graph is this particular uh, structure here so these guys they have some special agreements as you can see this is something that should not happen of course they're all reporting to each other and yes why not I have Joe Dalton here uh, on top Note that each node and each relationship is perfectly regular, perfectly normal, but the pattern is suspicious. It's a so-called ring pattern or a float ring, right? Now imagine that this would be very hard to detect in the database. So I'm going to find make it to my personal database. And I'm going to find this guy, Jerry Dalton. There he is. So as you can see, this seems perfectly normal in FileMaker, and I can click on this reports to link and I find the other guy and the other guy. It's only after a few clicks that I discover that this pattern is actually uh, wrong. So they're all reporting to each other. But how can I find these kinds of patterns in FileMaker? There's no way to script a simple find. What I would need to do is go through every employee, follow the reports to chain until I come back to my starting point. So what I'm doing then is basically pointer chasing. I'm following the different steps and I would need a long looping script and you can already predict that for uh, an employee database of 580 people it will take some time to go through all these reports to relationships for everybody. Well, let me show you how to to this kind of pattern matching in a graph database and I'm actually very proud because I found out how to solve this problem uh, without looking in some manual it's actually not that hard to do I have the query right here throat ring so what I'm doing is I'm going to search for nodes of type person I'm going to follow the reports to relationship up to five hops away but I could as well say 50 hops away depending on the size of the rings I expect until I find another person that reports back to my starting node p1 and if I find such a person return me the starting node and then the corresponding node so if I run this it will immediately reveal this pattern of rings so this would be P1 and then I would follow it until I find the P2 that reports back to P1. So you see this is actually very simple and very fast in a graph database whereas we would need a long script and maybe a slow script to find the same pattern in our FileMaker database. So I hope that with this example importing FileMaker data in a graph that I could show you two uh, benefits of using a graph like uh, this pattern matching or this float ring detection and exploring uh, my employee database to reveal uh, to very quickly reveal certain uh, clusters for instance that are not related to other clusters and with this I'd like to conclude uh, this video importing FileMaker data in the graph